What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm really excited to share with you some new watercolor brushes for Procreate 5. There's three brushes that I'm sharing and I'll kind of walk you through how each one of them works and then I'm going to be painting something and you can watch along with me and see how I use them real life in my process. I am also sharing a new paper texture that I made. The resources that I'm using in this video will be available for you to download free following the link in the description. So let's get started. The texture is simplified. This is much more of a true watercolor look. I have the two texture layers in this group up above and then I'm working on my painting layers below. Today I am working from a new palette. I feel like a good representation of my January mood, although if you couldn't tell it's a beautiful sunny day here in Chicago. But this just seemed really appropriate. My brushes that I'm sharing today that I feel like I am ready to send out into the world are my Floody Flow, Floody Smudge, and Floody Duo Color brushes. So Floody Flow is my main painting brush and these, I definitely recommend combining them with any other brushes that you use and love. So I'm going to start off using the Floody Flow brush and kind of show you how it works. So right now I'll have it up on full opacity and the largest size. And again, this is a watercolor style. When I start to paint with it, I am just pressing very lightly on the screen and you can already see it is extremely pressure sensitive for both size and opacity. By pressing lightly, even when I have it on the most opaque setting, I can really get a lot of variety in the amount of pigment that gets put down. So this is still pressing lightly. And then when I press really hard, it's super dark. And I'm using a navy, so you can really see the depth of color there. Now I'm gonna switch to an orange, change the opacity down. More translucent color is what gives you that true watercolor effect. If I just start painting some shapes here, the key thing with these brushes is that it kind of acts as if it's painting with real liquid as long as you don't lift your brush up. So if I start painting just a little bit, pressing really lightly, and then I get heavier, the pigment actually started flowing over into these lighter brush strokes. So I'll do that again, pressing lightly and then heavier. Even though the brush is not touching over here, it's still bleeding into it. And so it does create this really cool, realistic looking watercolor effect. The edge also looks as if it's like a pool of water sitting on the surface of paper and it's like, hasn't broken the surface tension yet. And so those are some of the things that I really love about this brush. However, when you go to make another stroke, you'll see the color layers on top. And so it, it is very buildable color, which can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on the effect that you're going for. And I like to have that option of building the color up because I think the smudge tool allows you to have the best of both worlds. So if I go to the smudge tool up here on the top bar and select the floody smudge brush, it's the same build as the floody flow, but it will allow me to push the color around a lot more. And so I'm gonna turn up the strength brush opacity all the way up and then turn the brush size up to about medium. And with smudge brushes, there's some tweaks that I make to them to allow them to really push the color and the pigment around on the paper. I would say that this, if you were to compare it to actual watercolor and paper, this is like adding water to your paper. And so it's adding no color. You can s sort of start on the side and it'll start to mix in some of that pigment that you have and then the more transparent translucent water, if you will, will start to bleed over. And so it really gives you just a lot of possibilities. So even though before it was very clearly defined brush strokes layered on top and you could see the edge of each brush stroke, by blending, you are able to really achieve a more cohesive appearance. And this allows you to, you know, blend different colors in with, you know, a lot of ease and really achieve more of those real life watercolor effects. One of the charms, I think, of watercolor is the amount of variation that you can get in using different colors and then using varying amounts of pigment. And so by having, you know, really dark here, and then if I was painting on actual paper with real watercolors. If I just dipped my brush in water and removed most of the pigment, but kept a little bit, I could brush over here, and then I could dip my brush in water, 
and blend the two together. And this allows you to really easily achieve some shading effects and give you more depth. It really is a super approachable medium to work in. And the best thing about digital watercolor is that you can undo, you can very easily trace something if you're just learning and build off of previous works that you've done. And it really gives you a lot more possibilities. The final brush that I'm sharing in this pack is a two color brush and this is again in the same style as the Floody Flow brush but it uses Procreate's new color dynamics which allows you to use two colors at once. So with this brush the harder I press the more the secondary color will come through the lighter, the more the first color will come through. As you can see, this is not as true to color as painting with each of these separately. It blends a little differently. I, I think that that's worth noting, but it does give you a really impressive and dynamic effect when you're painting with it. And so this was fun to build and try. And this is something that I really encourage you to go in and tweak. I want to show you how you can play in some of these settings. If you are in your brush panel and you just tap on your brush, it's going to bring up your brush studio. If you go down to color dynamics, this is where you can start to really play with how the brush performs and tweak it to your liking. You can test it here and then adjust. So color tilt will mean that as you bring the brush over and tilt your pencil, the secondary color will show up a lot more. The color pressure I have on a lower level, but this will allow you to adjust it if you want more of that secondary color showing through. One of the other great things that Procreate added is that you can reset the brush. And so if I, you know, make a bunch of wild adjustments and decide I don't like it, I can just hit reset. And as long as you don't change the reset point, it'll reset it to as downloaded. And so that's one way that you can adjust the color dynamics. But then I also encourage you to go into any of your other brushes and start to play with the taper of the brush. Because this one is so pressure sensitive, I don't have a taper on it at all, but say you want a really sharp pressure taper, you can add that and as you can see, it really gives you a strong point here. And you can, you can test it out in the brush studio before you change it for good. And again, you can always go back to about this brush and hit reset brush and it'll bring you back to where you started. I hope that this gives you a good idea of how these brushes behave. Again, this is not all inclusive. There's probably a lot of different ways that you can make these brushes interact with each other, but this is for sure the basics of what you need to know and why these brushes work so well. So next we're gonna jump in to painting something. So I am going to pull up another screen to bring up my dual screen. I'm gonna swipe up from the bottom and then I'm gonna tap on Pinterest and hold and drag it over to the side of the screen and then I actually already pulled up a floral arrangement here and I'm going to start out just on a painting layer and I'm gonna start to paint these ranunculuses and really I'm just drawing light circles and trying to layer my color on top I'll go back in and blend later so one of the things that I really like about watercolor is that by layering your brush strokes, you're able to get more of like a paper thin look and it really allows you to quite simply draw petals. And by playing with the levels of opacity and translucent, you can definitely achieve more depth and perspective of what you're painting than you might otherwise. I am, I think, pretty open about how I'm you know, in my early stages of art and was never formally trained and am trying to teach myself as much as I can, especially when it comes to free handing florals. And uh, florals are a great place to start because it doesn't have to be an actual flower in existence. And flowers can range from high levels of complexity to really abstract and they tend to still look pretty good. And so with watercolor florals, it's a really approachable place, even if you don't have that much of an art background. And they're fun. They're just fun to draw. With these brushes, something that I like to play with is leaving gaps of white. Because these are more watery style, leaving spaces in between the strokes where you actually don't have your, your pencil touch at all allows you to really achieve that look of the, the water and the paint 
pooling on the page and then not touching. And so when you paint in water, you might have like little droplets or channels where you had your brush stroke, but it's not all going to flood together if you're painting on dry. So this is a really good way to get a wet on dry effect. Now, because I am going to switch and paint some, some greenery, I am going to change to a new layer just because I plan to have some of this overlap and I don't want to muddy my colors up too much. And again, as long as I don't lift my brush up, I can really blend these strokes together through different levels of opacity. And this will save me time when I go to use the smudge tool later is that'll be just one less thing to blend. Here too, I can, you know, paint my leaf, keep my pencil touching the screen, and then start to go back and forth and use heavy pressure. And it really adds a lot more pigment to the page without expanding the surface area of what I'm painting very much. It will if you press extremely hard, but again, this will just eliminate some of the need for, for blending later on. Now I'm gonna go into my greenery layer and I'm going to erase some of the greenery, but I will have them overlap in kind of different ways. So I'm gonna tap this layer and bring up this menu and tap select. And then I'm going to go into my greenery layer with the eraser and I am just going to selectively erase by having my floral layer selected, I can only erase where the two overlap. And so it gives me a lot more control than I would otherwise have. Okay, and now I'm going to use my smudge tool and I'm using the floody smudge brush and I'm gonna start blending in these colors. And I'm gonna probably go back and forth, removing some of the pigment to add in some, some highlights. So I'll use the eraser tool, which is on the floody flow brush, as well as the smudge. And I'll probably be going back and forth between these two.
And then I'm happy with how much I've blended here, but I do want to go in and touch up a couple details. And I'm just gonna add in some darker areas using the Fluddy Flow brush. Keep it really small so that I can get the, the detail in there. Another thing that you can do is use the Fluddy Flow brush on the eraser tool and turn the opacity down and start really light and kind of like circle your artwork. You're going to remove some of the pigment and then it'll allow it to erase without having to blend so you don't have any sharp edges. Just like when you paint, if you keep it touching the screen the whole time as you're using the eraser, it allows you to lift up some of that color. Okay, so now as a final step, I'm going to merge these layers together, and then I'm gonna use the smudge tool to start to mix some of these together and to really make it look like it's naturally bled these pigments together. And to do this, I am using very little pressure on the smudge tool, so I will start out really light and push it to the end of, of where I'm having these colors bleed together. And then in the middle, I'm okay with going a little heavier, but then to make the, the bleeding look like it's fading out, I use a uh, less pressure on the edges. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this was helpful and hopefully you learned something. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up that helps me out and subscribe for more. If you want to download the brushes and the paper texture that I used in today's video, definitely follow the link in the description. For more Procreate and digital watercolor tutorials, you can check this stuff out here and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks again.